Our ancestors say we emerge from a series of worlds. This world is the fourth world. It is called the glittering world. As first man, first woman emerged, they explored this world. And one day came upon a small hole. There was smoke coming from the hole and a voice said, come in. In an instant, they were small and standing in front of the hole. There was a ladder and they descended the ladder. At the bottom was a dwelling and within there was a very ancient and wise being who was weaving. She looked at the couple and introduced herself as Spider Woman. Spider Woman taught First Woman how to weave and ever since then, Navajo women have been weaving and passing down their knowledge from mother to daughter. My grandmother was a weaver from two gray hills in Arbana Pass in New Mexico. All her life she wove rugs and she taught my mother and her sisters to weave. However, Navajo weaving is a dying art and most women do not weave anymore. Weaving is hard work and labor intensive. Despite this, some Navajo women are defiant and are struggling to keep this art alive. Let's see who taught me how to weave. My mother is the one that was there teaching me how to weave. Basically, she said, watch and observe. So, based on that, we watch her, and then we just learn how to make sure that we learn how to do the straight line first. Then after that, it was up to us to learn how to do the pattern, different pattern. And as you get older, you just try different things. My favorite pattern that I like to do are the Germantown. I love to work with the red, the blue, and the black. So basically that's what I love to do is the Germantown design. But I learned how to do the Yebiche and the Yebiche is something that I also enjoy. This is the first beginning of a rug. Basically, this is what you call warping. So you go over the top and under and then pass it to the other person. Over the top, under. Warping is really hard and there's not a whole lot of weavers left. And over the years, a lot of the younger generation really didn't want to weave because they put more time and effort into it. Sometimes they feel like they don't get what they want out of their rug. So in order for me to do a huge rug, I need two people to help me warp it. And usually my daughter has to be the one to be available because there's I've gone out to try to find people that will help me a lot of them don't know how to do the warping um, so I don't do as much as I used to on the bigger rug it's really hard for me to do it and I need to make sure my daughter's gonna be available throughout the day so when you're done with the warping, this is how it's going to look. And usually the edging is like a three-ply. So you have to re-spin it, get it wet and stretch it out. So there's a lot of preparation that's involved in weaving. And a lot of people don't understand how much work is put into it. My kids are at least here to help me, so it would be hard for me to do it by myself. So this particular one I'm doing, uh, it's not very wide because I want it to be 
able to put it on a dresser top. And most of my weaving is usually bought by Hearst Museum. I feel a, a good relationship with the buyer there and give it the best I could. So our mother used to tell us to make sure we do a really good job, like every piece is going to go to a museum. It's not, you're not there to just try to make money, you're there to give it the best you can if you want people to look at you. That's the same way with your product, any product, whether it's weaving, silversmithing, or pottery. So, your work will carry on, and I like to be able to have my work to someday have my grandkids look at it and say, my grandma made this. The weaving itself, all the preparation, first you have to prepare all your spinning, make sure you have enough wool. So, and also depend on the size. When I was a lot younger, it didn't take me as long. Uh, a five by three might take me about maybe a good, just basically weaving about three weeks. But now that I'm older, I'm lucky if I even do one or two of that five by three per year. And so I found out that I'm a little bit faster when I do the smaller rug. And with the eight bichets, it takes me almost about three weeks. But as you get closer to the end, it's really hard on your finger. Due to Navajo weaving will survive is that I think that fewer and fewer Navajos are um, weaving. It doesn't bring in income as the as a steady income and um The only way I think we can survive is if we pass it on, like teaching your grandkids how to weave and encouraging them and maybe framing them for them, more like an, an art and stuff like that, not as an income, something that they can use to kind of make their place nice. And, but there is a lot of school that are teaching kids how to weave, but like I said, maybe as, a, as an art piece and stuff like that, it'll probably survive. I think right now, uh, my grand my granddaughters, I think they have an idea, but I don't think they really 
would do a, a technical type of weaving, maybe just a straight line and stuff like that. And then the time that they would like to have me have them come over and say, because it's not just a one day teaching. Mm -hmm.